Makina announced new power tools. Skill has a couple new baby chainsaws. Ryobi has some fun new toys, and we go hands-on with a mower you won't believe, but you'll have to own. We've got Milwaukee flip sockets, log splitters, Ego's new tractor, routers, cool new style of utility knife, and a crazy bright flashlight. Plus another platinum tool deal from Ohio Power Tool. This is The Tool Show. Welcome back to all fans. I'm Sarah, that's Rob, and we're starting this week with Makita, who launched three new tools starting with a new rotary hammer. That is the all-new Makita HR2663 one-inch SDS Plus AVT rotary hammer with HEPA dust extractor with D-handle. You know when the word with shows up in the name twice, you're really getting lazy with your tool titles. Fortunately, it looks like a tool that's worth it. The new corded rotary hammer boasts eight amps, a one-inch concrete drilling capacity, and a seven and seven sixteenth inch max hole depth. It has 1.6 foot pounds of impact energy or 2.2 joules. The variable speed ranges from zero to 4,500 BPM and maxes out at 1,100 RPM no load speed. The included HEPA dust extractor is OSHA Table 1 compliant. It has active vibration control and the three modes of operation include rotation, hammering with rotation, and chipping. The new HR2663 is available now for $399. Makita also announced a new 40 volt max SGT 1.3 gallon upright vacuum, the GCV09. This new commercial vacuum features a powerful brushless motor that generates 64 CFM of suction power and 60 inches of water lift. It has a cleaning path of 15 inches and a three speed power selection for efficient operation. It can fall back almost totally horizontal to clean under furniture and has a two stage HEPA filter that captures 99.97% of particles. Unfortunately, the last 0.03% will get away. So sad. With an eight amp hour 40 volt XGT battery on board, you can expect up to 160 minutes of runtime on low and 40 minutes on high. It's also very quiet at only 67 decibels. Lastly, it has a toolless and easily accessible brush roller for quick hair removal, an LED headlight, five height adjustment levels, and light indicators for dust bag, brush, and battery levels. The new GCV09 40 volt max XGT 1.3 gallon upright vacuum is available now for $14.99 in an 8 amp hour kit. A $1,500 vacuum? Yep. For that much money, it better suck. Last of all, Makita launched their highly anticipated 40 volt max XGT 1300 PSI 1.5 GPM pressure washer, the GWH01. As the title suggests, it boasts 1300 PSI and 1.5 GPM on high. It has a self priming feature and a siphoning hose that allows for remote cleaning from most freshwater sources or water tanks. It has an auto switching two bay battery system that allows for longer run times. Speaking of, you can expect up to one hour of runtime from a pair of five amp hour XGT batteries. It also features a water resistant battery enclosure, 5.5 inch wheels, telescoping handle, onboard accessory storage, and toolless attachments. It's available for pre order today for around $679 bare. Skill launched three new OPE products, and I'm only going to tell you about one, mainly because Sarah's insisting on telling you about the other two. <laughs> Okay, settle down there, Leatherface. Let me cover this first. That's the new Skill PowerCore 20 Shear and Shrub 2-in-1 Kit. It's a transformer that would surely disappoint your kid on Christmas, but your gardener would love it. By swapping the included blades, you can turn it into a grass trimmer or a mini hedge trimmer. The shears feature a very compact design for working in tight spaces between plants. The 5 inch grass blade has a 5 16 inch cut capacity and the 8 inch shrub shears are perfect for trimming the hedges and it runs at 2100 SPM. You can pick one up today for only $99.99 in a 2 amp hour kit. Okay, that thing's cute, but I'm sorry, I'm just a bit distracted by Skill's pair of new cutty cutties. First up is the new Scale PowerCore 20 brushless 20 volt 6 inch pruning saw and for a violent tool of horticultural assassination, it sure is cute. It features a brushless motor that runs a 7 meters per second chain speed. It has tool free chain tensioning, auto lubricating chain, IPX4 water resistance, and you can expect up to 115 cuts per charge on a 2 amp hour battery. You can get one today for $129 in a 2 amp hour kit. But the new saw I'm most excited about is the all new PowerCore 20 6 inch telescoping mini pruning saw. This tiny 2.6 pound baby chainsaw can extend up to 2.8 feet, giving you up to 7 feet of reach. I freaking love that. It also has a tool free chain tensioning, a 5 meter per second chain speed, easy storage bracket, IPX4, and with the included 2 amp hour battery, you can get up to 115 cuts. You can get one today for $149 in a 2 amp hour kit. 
Ryobi also announced some new hand tools and accessories, including this 52-piece impact driving set with diamond grip bits for extra hold. It'll be available this month for $19.97. Plus, this new 38-piece precision screwdriver set for $14.97. That one I want. They also launched a new set of straight scissors with metal core, integrated tape breaker, and comfort grip for $13.97. And finally, a new 20 to 21-inch lawnmower striper that will give you those beautiful lawn stripes without requiring you to remove your bag. You can even add up to 20 25 pounds of water or sand for more defined lines. Speaking of mowing, a few weeks ago, our buddies across the pond at Machinery Nation showed off a very unique lawnmower. It was a remote control lawnmower called Mow Raider. It reminded me of the Disney movie Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Oh, it's a remote control! Now this seems like such an interesting idea, so when Mo Raider reached out and offered to loan us one for a demo, I jumped at the chance. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I freaking love this thing. First of all, this isn't a tiny razor blade robot mower that runs all the time. This is a full-on 21-inch mower with a reinforced aluminum deck, adjustable height, three speed modes, and of course, it's remote control. It's not much bigger than our Ego commercial push mower, but of course, there isn't a handle. Instead, you get this stick controller, you turn it and the mower on, and off you go. The variable turn radius means you can spin like a zero turn or smoothly adjust through a longer radius. The version we got is all wheel drive and it promises to go just about anywhere and it did. We took ours out just an hour after a rainstorm went through. I figured that the soaking wet grass and muddy ground would really challenge this thing, but it didn't. It was able to power through super wet tall grass with no problem. I even sent it through muddy areas that typically we just let grow because it's always too wet but the mow raider went in and got back out just fine. Besides taking the physical strain out of mowing, it also means that you can safely tackle steep hills. They say it will handle up to a 37 degree incline, which is nuts. To test it, I took it to a drainage ditch that usually doesn't even get mowed. It actually handled it amazingly well, especially considering it was five inch deep mud at the bottom. Now it struggled through the mud several times, but it was always able to get out on its own. My retired neighbors absolutely love this thing. Several of them commented on how easy it would be for them to keep mowing their yards, and they all have the same drainage dishes that are too steep to take a riding mower into. This thing could solve a lot of problems, and they weren't lying about the off-road capabilities either. We have a ton of trees, which means tree roots and down branches, and this thing never skipped a beat. It would just barrel over everything thanks to those huge tires. But those same wide tires caused one issue. This thing just doesn't want to go straight on our bumpy yards. I took it out front to our long section in front of our property just to see how straight I could get my lines. I first did a pair of stripes with my Ego, which has skinny tires that do a great job of keeping this thing straight. When I tried to match it with the Mo Raider, as you can see, the Mo Raider takes a lot of tweaking as you go and you end up with slightly squiggly lines. Now it does have an automatic feature to run a straight line, but that didn't work well for us because of all the bumps. It also has a feature that will make it automatically turn around and line up for a return stripe. That didn't work well for us either, but I think that's because of the wet grass and mud, which made it struggle to turn around sometimes. But if I'm being honest, I don't really see a need for those features anyways. I just wanna sit or stand someplace comfortable and mow my lawn, and this thing does that. It really did make mowing fun, and after a while, I didn't hesitate to send it into some pretty cruddy conditions that I never would have tackled with a push mower, let alone my riding mowers. It also has several other clever features, like a sensor that will tell you when the bag is full, an optional power dumping mode so you can empty your bag without touching it, an optional leaf suction module for sucking up and mulching all your leaves. I really want that, tons of safety features, and a battery that keeps it mowing for 2.25 hours. But of course, all this power and capability comes at a cost. The two wheel drive version is going to cost $3,000. Well, the all wheel drive version like the one we use can cost four. But during their Kickstarter, you can pick up a two wheel drive for as little as 1800 bucks and the all wheel for 2200. That's 45% off. Now, personally, I'd go for the all wheel drive simply because one of the biggest features of this thing is the ability to go places you either don't want to or can't go yourself, and the all wheel drive really pays off. The Kickstarter campaign ends on May 1st. As of today, they've already raised over $600,000, and deliveries are not something like eight months out. They're expected to be delivered next month. So be sure to check out the Kickstarter before it's too late. 
Moving on to our favorite tool videos of the week, this time starting over at Project Pine Hills, where we get a look at Milwaukee's versatile nut driver. It has three separate sockets that all nest into a hex post, and each one can be flipped between two different sizes. It's a single tool that can quickly adapt to six different socket sizes for driving bolts by hand. But as an added bonus, the Milwaukee is impact rated, so you can use them with your impact as well. Another thing I didn't know I needed. Next up is Project Farm. Todd decided to try a wide variety of chainsaw chain sharpeners from Timberline, Totile, Granberg, Steel, Protec, Ease Do, and Honosan. Doubt I pronounced half of those right. Wait, people sharpen their chainsaws instead of just buying another one? As it turns out, due to rising costs of new chains, you can save quite a bit of money with the right sharpener. And Todd found one that does a great job for about half the price. So go check it out. I love chainsaws. Yeah, we get it. A few months ago, Ryobi came out to our house to give us a preview of the new Ryobi 40 volt HP log splitter. And this week, we get an in-depth view of the world's first battery-powered kinetic log splitter, thanks to the team at Toolbox Buzz. Buried in between the specs and features, Rob even gives you a few great tips on the best way to use the tool to maximize its cutting potential. Taylor at Tinker with Tools recently tested DeWalt's latest atomic drill driver and avoided its hammer drill brother, assuming it would have the same specs, which is pretty normal. But as it turns out, the hammer drill is actually packing more power, so we figured it was worth a detailed look. The Kite Army continues its march on OPE world domination, this time providing an in-depth look at the all-new EGO T6 lawn tractor. He covers all of the features and specs and even shared a few great action shots of this awesome new mower. I have no idea who this builds and stuff guy is, but he shared a great head-to-head -head between the Hikoki half-inch battery-powered router and the Milwaukee half-inch M18 router. Both are extremely powerful and capable considering the power source, but the biggest question he asked was about runtime. So to figure that out, he forces them to dance till they drop. We really need to have more power tool dance offs. No, no, we don't. Over at Last Back's Tool, Doc showed off the new utility knife from Husky with a really unique handle. With most utility knives, you slide the blade out, use it, and then hopefully remember to slide it back. But the new Husky has this awesome oversized squeeze grip that pops the blade out while you use it and automatically slides it back in when you set it down. It even has an adjustable stop setting to adjust how far out the blade comes with each squeeze. I freaking love that. Over on Miller's Construction, we got a look at Olight's ultra girthy 7000 lumen Marauder Mini, and I can't look away. He also tosses in a special Arkfeld Pro, a favorite of ours, and a special racing livery that suddenly has me buying another version of a flashlight I already own because of pretty stripes. Oh, I get it. Our last stop is with Tim Johnson, who got his hands on three new skill tools that I already talked about in our new segment. The new PowerCore 20 6-inch pruning saw, 6-inch telescoping pruning saw, and the hedge trimmer slash shrub shears. And they look even better in action than they do in a press release. Yeah, I know what you're getting next. It's time again for a Platinum Tool Deal from Ohio Power Tool. And this week, you can save $50 off a $100 purchase of anything from Ego. It doesn't even have to be in stock, they will order it. As long as it's from Ego and it's from the Ohio Power Tool website. You can save $50 off a $100 purchase. But remember, the code will only work for the first 25 people who use it, so you have to move fast. The code you need is TS14768. Good luck. Remember guys, we have these deals every single week, but it's only for the first 25 people. So be sure to subscribe and hit that reminder bell so you'll always be one of the first people to watch our show on Fridays at 8 p.m. Eastern time. I wanna thank Flex, Ego, Tested HQ, and Ohio Power Tool for continuing to support our show and our community of tool fans. If you can, do something kind for someone else this weekend. And Sarah and I, we'll see you next week.